Hello, and welcome to the Kane Forensics video series. In this video, we will look at the GUI hashing tools on the Kane Forensics distro. Hashing is used a lot in downloading files from the internet to check the integrity of the downloaded files. It is also important in digital forensics in order to maintain the integrity of the evidence files. QuickHash by Ted Smith is an open-source data hashing tool for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. It enables the rapid selection and hashing of data files, trees of files, and disks. The user can also compare individual files against one another or folder of files based on hash algorithms and log the results. So once we have it launched, the first thing to do is go on the left-hand side here and select the algorithm. In my experience, I've always used MD5, which is widely accepted in the digital forensics community. If your lab policy dictates that you use specific hashes, make sure you follow your agency's standard operating procedures and quality assurance manuals. So let's take a look at this first tab of text. So like it says, you just start pasting or typing text into the box and you will get a simultaneous hashing. There are some options here where you can make your input text all uppercase or all lowercase. And here you can select whether you want your hashes to be in uppercase or lowercase. You can also save the output to a text file. And you can select whether you actually want to have your original source included in that output file or just a hash. And you also have an option of line by line hashing. Next, we can do the file tab. So this allows you to hash one individual file. You can either select it through here or you can do drag and drop. So let's go ahead and do a drag and drop. Okay, so we can drag and drop it, select the file, and then it will give you the hash. Once again, you can switch case, upper case or lowercase on the hash value. You can also input an expected hash value and then it'll tell you whether it matched or not. And you can also delay the hashing to a time in the future if you want to do that. The next tab is the files. So here you can select folder of files. So you have to select a folder. So let's go ahead and select the abstract folder. And it immediately gets you the answers. And here you can have it hash just the files in the root of the chosen or selected folder. And subfolders will be ignored. You can delay to start it at a different time. For files, we can select a directory tree. And by default, if we don't select the hidden folders, it will not find any folders that start with the dot. So I'm going to go ahead and select the hidden folders and do the selection again. And this time, it should find a subfolder which starts with a dot. You can choose the file types to only look at certain files types. And you can also load a hash list that has known hash values. Next tab is the copy tab. So you can copy from one folder to another. So let's go ahead and copy from user share backgrounds, mate. Let's go ahead and copy that. And let's put that into the temp folder. And we can say go. And it's going to go ahead and copy all of the files. And then it's going to hash before and after. And once again, you can make certain selections of just listing the subdirectories or listing the subdirectories and files. You can delay the start time. You can save the results in a spreadsheet, which we probably want to do. You can ignore subdirectories. 
You can select only certain file types. You can select to copy hidden files. And lastly, you can select to not rebuild the path, in which case they will change the names of the files if they're duplicates. All right, next tab, you can compare two files. So you can select two files. You can delay it and then you can immediate compare. You can, you can save the results if that's important to you. Next tab, you can compare two folders. So let's go and compare our original folder, user share background mate. And we want to compare that with our copy of slash temp. Okay, once again, you can log your results, save it in a file. You can delay the start. Just go ahead and compare now. And here you can see, once again, the listing of all the comparisons. It gives you the results right there, match. So one thing to keep in mind is that when it's doing the comparison, is actually just comparing the contents, right? So it's matching the hashes of the contents and the number of files, and actually not the file names. So the next tab is the disk tab. So once you come here, it will ask you to launch the disk hashing module. And it says that you must run as administrator for disk hashing. In our case, since we're using the Kane environment, we are already using the super user. And another note is that it says for Linux user, you may choose to use the file tab to run it. But I'm actually just going to go ahead and run it with the module. So once you click on the module, you get a choice of logical volumes. So here you can see all the possible logical volumes. And you can also see the physical disks that are available. So let's go ahead and just run a logical module because it's all the same. Just for speed, we're going to select the MD5 hash. And you, as you can see, you can run a combination of MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, SHA-512, etc. I'm going to pick the popular ones, which is MD5 and SHA-1. And once again, you can delay the start of the program and you can save a log file. Once you're ready, you can go ahead and hit compute hash. It's going to ask you for a output. I'm going to go ahead and put it in slash temp as sdb2 underscore hash dot txt. It is a small partition, so it got done pretty fast. And here are the two hashes. And we can take a look at the output. So if this is the output of quick hash tells you where it ran it, what device we did, or in this case, what volume we did, what the algorithms were chosen, start and stop dates, and then there are the two hashes. And last tab is base64 data. So you can hash an encoded base64 file and then generate a hash of its decoded counterpart without the user having to create a decoded version first. GTK hash is a program included in the Kane distro for calculating hashes. So we can launch it under forensics tools and hash GTK hash. The first thing to do is go into the edit main menu and then preferences. Here you are presented with all of the hash functions that this program is capable of. The most common one used for digital forensics is MD5, SHA-1, and SHA-256. So let's go ahead and select just those three. Next, we can select the digest format to use the lowercase hexadecimal, the uppercase hexadecimal, or base64. I would leave it in lowercase as that seems to be the common output format for most digital forensics tools. If your lab policy dictates that you use specific hashes, make sure you follow your agency's standard operating procedures and quality assurance manuals. Now, we can go to the View menu and select which of the three types of objects we want to hash. The first one is File. So here, you can select the file to hash. So let's go ahead and select User, Share, Backgrounds, 
mate abstract and then from there we're going to pick the first one the wallpaper so once we selected it all you got to do is just go ahead and click on the hash button on the bottom right hand corner and that's it now we've got our md5 hash our sha1 sha256 you can also drag and drop so you can open up your windows file here so we can do user share backgrounds made abstract and then we can select different file drag and drop and we can do that if you are hashing a file that was downloaded from the internet and there was a hash given you can insert that into the check sum box and then you'll see if it's a match so let's pretend that this is something we got off the internet notice there's a green check mark right so if you have a different value then you will not get the green check mark but if you do have the same matching value when you type the hash the green check mark will let you know that it is verified you can also have a hash based message authentication code hmac so if you click on here and you can put in your hash now this is the hashes that are generated with the hmac key next on the view menu you have the text so let's go ahead and select that so here you can basically just type in text in real time and the hashes will appear in real time and same thing applies for the checksum in the hmac key if you have a checksum of the phrase that you know you can put it in here it'll let you know if it matches and same with the hmac key if you have a key that you want to use it will hash it with the key all right last on the view menu we have file list so here you can add individual files to be hashed right so you can add them one at a time or once again you can use drag and drop and drop in multiple files at one time same as before once you're ready you can just hit hash and it will hash all of the files that are on this list and give you this output file the output you can actually do a file save as and then you can save that out as a text file and the text file will contain the hashes and the file itself the last thing I want to cover is the file open feature so from here you can actually read in a file that is of the checksum check digest format within this file you will have a expected checksum and then the path name to the file this is useful if you have a bunch of files that you transfer from one location to another and need to verify the integrity of the copied files once your file list is loaded you can hit the hash button and it will calculate the hashes based on your selected preferences and if any of the calculated hashes is different than the one in the checksum file you will get the red no symbol if the hashes match you will get the green check mark so now you know that this file was somehow corrupted when it was copied over all right so that brings us to the end of this video where we took a look at the two GUI hashing tools available on the Kane Forensics Distro. We looked at Quick Hash and GTK Hash. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time!